We are live. Welcome to Thoughts on ep Season 1, Episode 7 of Willow. This episode is called Beyond the Shattered Sea. Now, let's see. Yeah, so we open on Eric and the the young woman who really appears to be the crone in disguise. So I guess I will be referring to her as... Let's see, how do we combine the words young and crone? Krung! Eric and Krung drink some of the liquid evil. The color looks like Donald Trump bathes in it daily, which explains a lot. Now, does that mean that that's why he's evil, or is that... Is it that he's spreading his evil? Yeah, hard to, hard to tell. I gotta say, I really cracked up when, like... Okay, so I think it's that... Yeah, I, you know, Eric says... You know, the, the, yeah, they're talking about, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm from Tiras Lean. Um, actually, I'm the prince. And she just deadpans, congratulations. <laughs> Which is not the reaction he's used to getting from, yeah. And I really appreciate, you know, she sees through his whole shtick, you know, and she she explains, oh yeah, you know, you're gonna tell me a secret. Oh, he's he's sensitive and he's empathetic and he listens and then we make out. And it's, let's see. And he explains that he walked for days, even weeks. Which, yeah, that is legitimately eerie to just... And, and he says, you know, it's like the days never end. And she's like, everything ends. Which, you know, if you think, oh, just, you know, young girl. Oh, that's kind of fatalistic. But if you think of her as Krung, then you don't say everything ends. Um, you know what? I think I may have left something in the oven. So I'm just going to go. And, yeah, Elora manages to get Kit out of the liquid. Honestly, overall, that's, you know, not the most of, as, as far as, um, can't believe I'm blanking on the word, um, cliffhangers go. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I, did anybody really think that she was going to die? Yeah, it was, you know, the one thing I thought was maybe the, you know, once she, once they fished her out, she was going to be taken over by the, the evil and like, you know, secretly evil for a while and then it would be revealed. But it does not look like they're going that, you know, somewhat like with, with Ballantyne and, and such. But, you know, instead, now she's more empathetic towards Elora. So, yeah, I've, something did come of it and I like it. Another. Let's see. Yeah, and, you know, Borman says, you know, he shouldn't use the armor yet. I can't help but wonder if it's actually that he is insecure, that he's worried that it's not going to work for him either, you know. And they use... I should have realized last week, but, uh, you know, now that they use the clip in the previously on... Yeah, the reason he didn't want them to go was that he didn't want them to hear what... What was his name again? Ash... Ash... something? Christian Slater. You know, he didn't want to hear what he had to say to them. And we, we, you know, we still don't know which of them is telling the truth necessarily, but yeah. Let's see... And... Yeah, they go to... Yeah, Kit collapses, which... Not a good look. That is not the way to convince people that you are completely okay. So they go to resupply, and they do that joke, you know. I, f I feel like a lot of the jokes on this show we've seen before, but they do a pretty decent job of telling them, you know. Sometimes, if you don't have original material, you can do a lot just by telling the joke in an in an effective way. I feel like they're doing that pretty well. You know, the the they do the are are they dead or are they just asleep joke with I th I think he's referred to as Zeb and 
yeah, like, at first, it really, yeah, it looked like he was just dead, and, you know, this is not a place that everybody visits all the time, so, yeah, you know, just, <laughs> let's see, and I, I like how several of them, like, it takes them a little while to get past the fact that Willow has been carrying around a lot of, you know, expensive, you know, you know, yeah, Zeb asks for payment, and he's like, oh, yeah, I've got some gold, some rubies, you know. And Graydon is like, and yet we've never once stayed at a decent inn? You know, that that is, like, if this is supposed to be a and d like, where's the tavern? Like, there's... I don't know that much about D&D, &D, but I've heard that there's always a tavern, you know, so, yeah, an encounter. Uh, let's see, yeah, and, and you know... Yeah, Graydon is, of course, like, upset, and, and Borman is, like, just going with the flow kind of thing. So he's just, like, turns out Willow's loaded. And it's it's funny when Zeb can't remember the, the quest and, you know, because, again, it's it's not the most original joke. But, yeah, you know, you you expect, if it wasn't, if it was a more played serious fantasy, which I realize some people wish that it were, um, you know, he would basically, he would know exactly the details of the quest. Let's see, and, yeah, Eric doesn't want to go down the, the path that Krung has, is, is standing in front of and trying to lure him to, and at the end of the episode, it looks like he may have gone through and has come, and has come back. I do really love that, like, I don't know who made the decision, but apparently if you're making, like, fantasy for young people, like, if they're evil, they have to be wearing black leather. Like, I don't know why that's, like, um, that is a, yeah, that's spam, so I am not going to answer it. Uh, let's, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, the, um, uh, what's it called? Yeah, you know, Charmed was pretty bad with, with this. Like, if you're, if you're evil, you have, you're wearing black leather, you've got, like, spiky hair. I forget, did they give any of them tattoos? I'm not sure anybody had tattoos. You know, I, I guess if they had to represent, like, the supreme evil, they'd also have tattoos. Especially on the, on the face. That means you're, you're pure evil, according to these prudes. It's ridiculous. Um, but, but yeah, you know, and, and, yeah, I think one of the guys had, like, long hair to denote. Ah, oh, he's evil now, because he doesn't usually wear the, the long hair. Just, yeah. Let's see. T to be clear, I do... It's been a while since I last watched it, but I probably still enjoy Charmed if I sat down and watched it now. Let's see. Um, yeah, I thought it was pretty funny when Eric was all defensive with Krung. Um, let's see. And, you know, Zeb is like, so, eggs, who wants their, you know, does anybody want scrambled eggs? And Grain, like, smacks him. And Willow's was like, you could have just said poached. Yeah, that is that is the the actions of a man who really does not want scrambled eggs. Like, holy crap! And yeah, great action scene with the the chase on the you know thing and the the. It's just, I'm gonna call him toothy toothy McMouthful. Toothy McMouthful leaps onto the thing, the moving you know, and they have to fight and just you know. The, 1980, the, the movie Willow had several excellent action scenes where, in addition to a chase, there's also a fight. And so far, you know, the, the let's see, this show had delivered one that was... Uh, and then there was one where they could have had, but it was only a chase, not a fight. I feel like this, you know, it paid off to, to give it more time. This was a really excellent one. Uh, I liked when, you know, there's, um, 
yeah, I think that's also Toothy McMouthful throwing these, like, l throwing stars. And, you know, for, yeah, for, I forget, is it maybe Borman who sees one and then Jade, like, holds up a piece of wood to, to take several of them. And Kit, I think it's just like she, she can hear there's something going on. So she opens the door and, you know, throwing star, like, get, gets right into the, the not, not like super deep, but it's stuck in the flesh. It's, it's deep enough that it sticks, you know. And she looks at that and goes, ah! just that was really funny. That, I, I feel like everybody on this show has such great comedic timing, comedic chops. They must have really, like, they can't all have been recruited from comedy. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name, but uh, the, the actress who plays Jade, she wasn't this funny in the, um, yeah, uh, let's see. Is that a spoiler? Let's just say she appeared in something... Yeah, if I don't say what she played, she appeared in something Star Wars where she wasn't really asked to be funny either. And then there was, she she was in Falcon and the Winter Soldier where she also wasn't funny. So, so yeah, you know, certainly some of them. Um, Tony Revolori, I'm not sure. I mean, I know he did do some films with, or at least, at least one film with um, Wes... Anderson, so, yeah, but anyway, really great. Let's see, yeah, and I like, you know, the, the, um, when Jade said, you know, she's like, oh, there, there had to be, like, 30 quills, and, and Kid is like, you told me it was three, <laughs> which, is, yeah, because, you know, adventurers like to exaggerate, you know, the, the, um, Beowulf's Imagine is teeming with sea monsters. Um, but yeah, you know, she's like, and there was something they did to make it painless every time we moved. You know, she moves in real close, and we're thinking, oh, they're gonna they're gonna kiss again, which would all probably also work. But I feel like the reason she leaned in was to trick her so that the the slap would go unnoticed, since. You know, but yeah, that was, that was kind of funny. Um, and we get some training montages. Elora with Willow. Jade and Kit. Elora and Graydon. And, you know, the, the fight. Um, you know, Kit. Yeah, Jade sees through that she's doing, I, f I forget what it was called, but there's some strategy where if you're fighting someone you know, you keep expecting, you yeah. You keep expecting them to use specific moves that you know they know, and if you don't, if they don't use them, it's gonna end up frustrating. And you know, at first, Kit is her, you know, her usual braggadocious self and says, "Yeah, I'm sure it is frustrating, but you know, she does, yeah, she does confess that she's in love with Jade, which, you know, if you know, if, yeah, she was, let's see, I think, right, right, she did say it, but they didn't get to kiss at the end of, so that was, that wasn't last week's episode, that was the episode before that, you know, and they haven't really had much of a chance to, you know, they were, they were trying to escape from the troll cave while everything is like, you know, stuff is collapsing, they have to get out of there, you know, so, this was the first time they really had a chance to, and yeah, she she says it again, and they kiss, and I continue to think it's really sweet. Let's see. I I quite like uh, Willow um, Willow's advice to Elora, which I think we can all use. You have to accept the bad parts of yourself so they can't hurt you and it's very true you know everybody nobody's perfect everybody has something and if we learn to control it then it can't control us and let's see yeah and eric and krung again talk some more and do kiss, but he says, you know, he is in love with, with Dove. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, and Willow has a nightmare about Mims, his daughter, being, you know, needing him. And they do that thing where, you know, suddenly, you know, the, the person... Yeah, the, the character in the dream turns directly to face and says, Wake up! in somebody else's voice, and it's Borman. Let's see. And... It's a really sweet relationship between Graydon and... I'm afraid I forgot what they called it, but the, the animal that's, like, you know, um, carrying them across the, the... What was it called again? The, the Shattered Sea. That is, I like that concept, too. Like, a sea is not something you can walk on, but because it's shattered, that means parts of it you can walk, at least parts of it you can safely walk on. So that's, yeah. It's it's like a, um, what's it, ne neg negative number or something, just, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and Elora and Kit talk, and... You know, in part about Mad Mardigan and, you know, Kit admits the, you know, there's maybe some jealousy and, you know, Elora reassures her, your father did love you. And, yeah, I feel like this is something that can help. It's a bit of a, a stereotype, so I'm, I'm not judging, but apparently a number of, of young young women struggle with with being jealous of other young women and yeah i feel like this you know this episode might be and show in general might be able to help cope with that like you know like willow said accept the bad parts so they don't hurt and let's see yeah and and willow has another nightmare and you know, it's this thing of the the last time. Ah, let's see. I'm afraid I forget the names, but some last time that he left, somebody. Uh, last time he quested, somebody left, and the you know because he wasn't there, and now he's worried that that Mims. You know, and, and yeah, I uh, I hope that somehow she made it, but she faced Ballantine, you know. I don't know, like, um, you know, Mims, as far as I understand, is basically a, a farmer, not a warrior. So it's, pro and, and we know that Ballantine survived that encounter, so there's a good chance that she didn't. And let's see, then there is the, um, yeah, and we find out that Graydon named the, the creature Kenneth, which is, is very sweet, and he, he let it go because it is, you know, it was getting increasingly depressed the further they went, and yeah, I mean, you know, you can only cry... Artax, what is it, don't go or something, so many times before you're just like, okay, fine, just leave then. I guess that's the only way to save you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and Borman now realizes he's not worthy and it really bothers him. And he's like, you know, I'm nobody. And... I really appreciate, you know, Graydon, you know, realizes now he's not going to be with Elora. That's not a thing that's going to happen. But instead of being frustrated by this unrequited love or feeling like, well, you know, I got to have her. Otherwise, nothing matters. You know, he found something good from it. You know, he says to her, you helped me be who I was meant to be. And for that, I'm grateful. You know, I really appreciate that. Like, I don't suppose I want to spoil, I will just say that there was a major franchise that even in, was it, was it like the late 90s? I'll, I'll find it really quickly. Um, was it, uh, it was called that, and it 
ended, yeah, yeah, it ended in the late 90s, and they found a way to make sure that a character who had this unrequited love, you know, at first didn't end up with the person that they were really in love with, but through this, you know, yeah, something, something unusual happened, and because of that, the character was able to be with the, the person that they were in love with. And it's just, there are so many people in real life who will not end up with at least one of the people that they fall in love with, and we gotta use media to, com you know, um, to communicate to them that's okay, that's not the end of the world, you know, but for so long, especially if it's a man who's in love with a woman, you know, if it's cishet, then you know at some point they're gonna, you know, unless the male is like uh, an antagonist character in the movie, then they might not end up with the person that, but other than that, you know, just, yeah, it's, it's, And I, I really appreciate about this show, you know, in general, a lot of these Disney Plus um, original, sh uh, yeah, you know, shows that are in the same franchise as something else, you know, so also some of the Star Wars ones at least and the MCU ones, you know, they are communicating good values to young people. I really appreciate that. Now, <clears throat> let's see, yeah, and Elora saw the vision that Willow had, you know, a uh, toothy mick mouth full, um, showed it to her, so, just, yeah, and, you know, he, he says, I'm not a great wizard, I'm a farmer who got lucky. You know, and that's, I, I mentioned in an earlier episode, you know, he basically, it's this, um, uh, imposter syndrome, I think it's called, uh, you know, that, that you feel like you're not good enough, you feel like you don't deserve the job you have, or the friends you have, or the relationships you have, in general, and, uh, you know, yeah, it's very real, it's something a lot of people struggle with, and, yeah, you know, because I, I feel like before the end of episode 8, someone will tell him, maybe you're not the great sorcerer that, you know, the legends say. But you, you know, you saved us. You, you, were, you were enough, you know. I feel like they're teeing up that kind of thing. And now Kit is actually really encouraging towards Elora. I, I really appreciate that. And it's, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, like, she she can be abrasive. She's not the most polite always. But at the end of the day, you know, Kit is there for the people that she cares about. You know, she didn't even hesitate to, you know, when she found out that Eric was, you know, oh, yeah, he's, he's you know, we're here. Eric is here. It's like the entire length of the known universe. A lot of dangerous people are going to try to stop us. It's going to take a long time. It's going to be super dangerous. And Kit is like, I'm in, you know, because she wants to save her brother. And, you know, when she talked disparagingly about Dove before meeting Dove, she was basically expressing, you know, again, not the, not the nicest words she chose and such, but she was expressing concern for her brother. And let's see. Yeah, you know, um, Kit and Elora go off the edge together, even when the rest of them say, we, you know, we can't proceed. And, you know, I, I can't help but wonder maybe that's part of the test. You know, they're, they're, you can't go past the Shattered Sea without... Um, without acing the test, they said, and they thought the test 
was if you can, you know, if you dare walk on the water, I feel like, you know, okay, once you, once you accept, you know, I can walk on water, and not only when it's frozen, you know, then, oh, okay, well, big shot, do you dare jump off a frickin' waterfall, you know, because they, can, they can't even see the bottom, like, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a leap of faith, Miles. And, yeah, you know, they're within view of the city and then it turns out even within walking distance. So they go there and Eric is there in black leather and smile and the pop song is like, I'm a wanted man, I've got blood on my hands. So, yeah, you know, maybe Eric is evil. I, I mean, more evil than, you know, your average colonialist. But, yeah. Uh, really psyched to, to see where this is going to end. And I feel like, you know, each of these episodes present as an interesting adventure in and of itself. And yeah, um, you know, for, for the, so, so yeah, uh, predictions. I do think it, it does not look like we're going to get another season. I guess I will really quickly Google it one more time. For old time's sake, drop that beat, scratch that break. Uh, does not look like, yeah. Um, the most recent, let's see. Um, yeah. Um, the showrunner really badly wants another season, but you know, apparently it has not done as well as, you know, not very many of the Disney Plus, uh, the, of the MCU Disney Plus shows have gotten more than one season. Uh, I guess it's really only the two out of, like, what, seven or something, so, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks to me like they'll be able to wrap it up. I don't think we're going to get this really obnoxious um, cliffhanger ending to the season the TV shows used to be really obnoxious with. It looks to me like they're going to to resolve all the major conflicts and basically, like, leave the door open, but not, you know, because Kit and Elora are, you know, they, yeah, they've reached the place, you know, yeah, Eric comes out of the, the, the door that closed when he and... Krung left before, so, uh, let's see, it's possible, I, I figure they're probably not gonna, see, if, if they see Krung, they're gonna see Krone, not Krung, and, yeah, so, you know, supposedly, Elora is supposed to, supposedly, she's supposed to take down the Krone, that could have been worded better, and, yeah, there's, you know, I, I, it's not going to happen, like, right away. There's probably, you know, they're going to do the thing of, I can't believe you're evil. I can't hurt him. He's my brother, kind of thing. Um, you know, I would be extremely surprised if we don't see, you know, the rest of the quest pass the test and, you know, jump off the, the waterfall. Uh, let's see... Yeah, you know, so one way or another, it's going to end up with at least several of the, well, yeah, Elora and probably other quest members fighting the crone directly. Maybe there's an army, you know, yeah. Um, I figure by the end of the finale, season finale, possibly series finale, the, you know, the crone will have been defeated. Personally, I do think that Eric will survive, but I guess we'll see. It is possible that, they, you know, so far they really haven't been particularly eager to kill off Quest members. Like, they killed off the old white guy, which was also, like, there were some conservatives who were freaking out. Oh, wow, you can't kill one of the young women, but you can kill the old white guy, huh? Do you realize how pathetic you sound? Like, just, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good laugh. You know, if you if you if you're like feeling depressed and you need a good laugh, 
look at conservative reaction to this show. It is, it gives me life. It's unbelievably funny. Um, let's see. You know, it's sad that it might mean that we won't get more of this show, but on its own, devoid of context, it's, it's hilarious. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw, you know, there was one guy who was freaking out about, oh, you know, they're gonna center a queer romance, you know, because this is the guy who made sure that, um, what was, uh, I can't believe, let's see, Rod of the, um, now I can't even remember his name. Uh, Rod of the editing room said that he was the only black man in the galaxy. And for a while that was sadly true. Lando Calrissian. Yeah. Um, you know, apparently the younger Kazdan, I forget his name. Lawrence is the elder. But yeah, the younger Kazdan really wanted for Lando Calrissian to be pansexual. And apparently the conservatives absolutely hate that. And it's like, good. Like, you, you know, Lando Calrissian used to be the only representation that African Americans could get for the Star Wars universe. Now he's also Pan, which, you know, and, and like, if you're, if you're African American and you really don't want people thinking you're Pan, well, you know, maybe you're more of a Finn. You know, there, now, there are now other, you know, black people in the Star Wars galaxy. Not enough, but, you know, if they do, in fact, keep making these movies, you know, for all of eternity, then maybe eventually we'll... <laughs> yeah, probably not. They're probably not gonna go nuts with, with representation, sadly. But, yeah, I think it's great that, that he's now pansexual. And apparently, like, Donald Glover said in, like, an interview... How could you not be pansexual out in space? There's so many things to have sex with. And, yeah, I, seriously. Um, you know, yeah, he is He is not only robosexual and leia-sexual. He is in general, like, he, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that is it for my predictions. Yeah, uh, I'd like more seasons. And, you know, I saw that apparently... Um, they're also considering maybe a movie. If we, if this is all we get, I will basically be happy. I feel like they've, you know, the, the values, the action scenes, the, the special effects, um, character exploration and development. I feel like the, the show has really delivered the things that I was hoping it would. Um, and, you know, that were realistic it's too bad that, you know, it's not my favorite movie of, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name also, but it is right here. It is not my favorite Val Kilmer role or movie. I quite like him in Heat. Um, but yeah, um, which I suppose, um, you know, the women who are attracted to him also like seeing him in heat. Um, but, but yeah, you know, sadly, it's not very realistic that we would get a, it's, you know, a, a real appearance uh, of, of his. And, you know, that's too bad. Um, yeah, I think that is everything so... Uh, right. Uh, there, I expect to record one more video... Uh, this week, but that will probably be it. But then next week, uh, there will probably be more than more than two. So, yeah, that's it for this one. So I hope I catch you later this week. Bye bye.